skeletal muscle, striated muscle, with iron hematoxylin staining. This piece of tissue was taken from the tongue. In the tongue, we have three directional muscle. We have a sagittal, a longitudinal, and a transverse direction. So if we orient the piece of tissue optimally, then we will see two longitudinal cuts, one in this direction, the other perpendicular to it, and we see also profiles which are cross-sected. Between the strands of the skeletal muscle fibers, we may have mixed salivary glands. Mixed salivary glands, we will not have them in all slides, but we have them in many of our slides. If I enlarge the picture and we look at the longitudinal strands of the skeletal muscle fibers, then we will see uh, the cross striation. The dark stripes are the A bands, the lighter stripes are the I bands. We do not see any finer details here, except for some regions, like for example here. You see parallel two dark lines. I will explain you this in another picture. This is here a loose connective tissue with some blood vessels and fat cells. We know that the size of the fat cells uh, is between 50 and 100 micrometer. And you see that the profiles of the cross section of the skeletal muscle and also the longitudinal cuts are in the same range. So the skeletal muscle fiber cross section, the diameter of it is about 50 to 100 micrometer. The length of the skeletal muscle fiber, which is actually a multinucleated giant cell, may vary from a few millimeters to even 50, 70 centimeters. The nuclei of the skeletal muscle cells are pressed to the side of the muscle cells. They are positioned right under the sarcolemma. In the cross-section profiles, they are also under the sarcolemma, like here. Or you don't see a nucleus because the cut didn't go through the plane of the nucleus. You see a fine punctuation in the cross-section of these muscle cells. These are the cross-sections of the myofibrils. Occasionally, you have a little bit more cytoplasm. Those territories appear paler, like here. cross sections of the salivary glands. And here you see an artery in an oblique cut with the red blood cells. The red blood cells are black with this staining. In our slides, many times you also see the surface epithelium like here with the papillae of the tongue. The epithelium on the surface is a stratified squamous non-keratinizing epithelium many times with lymphocytes between the cells. Underneath, this is here a loose connective tissue, a cell-rich loose connective tissue with many lymphocytes. Deeper fat cells also appear. And underneath here you have the skeletal muscle fibers in an other specimen where you don't have salivary glands between the muscle fibers. Please note that all theoretical knowledge connected to the skeletal muscle you must learn from the lecture material and from your textbook. This is a photo of the skeletal muscle fibers stained with iron hematoxylin from our website. In this region, for example, you see very well that the dark band, which is the A band, has a lighter stripe in the middle that we call the H band. In the H band, you only have myosin filaments, 
they here in this region they don't overlap with the actin filaments that that is why it is large it, it is lighter if i enlarge this territory and here you see the enlarged picture then you see even better that in within the dark events in the middle there is the age band and the red dots show the position of the uh, z uh, bands uh, the, the z bands are in between two sarcomeres so this would be the length of a sarcomere the length of a sarcomere is about 2.5 micrometer in relaxed muscle it, with this the width of one band is around one micrometer and in this case this dark light dark territory is around 0 0.3 0 0.4 micrometers this is about the capacity of our microscopes 